what I had avoided seeing all my life. Which was? Um, boy, that's... <laughs> um, Memories too painful. Memories that would drop you bone by bone. Sally Field, a Hollywood legend with a brilliant career, has won many prestigious awards such as Oscar and Emmy. However, behind her career, few people know that she kept a deep love secret for many years. Now, at the age of 77, Sally has decided to reveal. Who is the secret lover? What is the reason she kept it a secret for so many years? Let's find out. Before delving into Sally Field's secret love story, let's take a look back at her childhood years and her path to fame. The legendary Sally Field had a rocky road to Hollywood fame. Born to actress Margaret Field and businessman Richard Dryden in 1946 in Pasadena, California, Sally Margaret Field was a difficult person to deal with and influenced during her formative years. Her parents separated in 1950 when Sally was a young girl. Margaret married stuntman and actor James Mahoney, Jocko, the following year. After Sally's biological father's second marriage, the family dynamics changed and he became distant from his daughter. Although Jocko was initially lovable, his true nature quickly emerged. According to her 2018 memoir, Jocko began behaving inappropriately towards Sally when she was a teenager. He made demands that made Sally feel embarrassed and put her in situations that made her very upset. Sally Field shared her difficult childhood experience when Jocko's behavior negatively affected her psychologically. Although not directly violent, these actions left emotional trauma causing Sally to feel confused and pushed into a closed state, making it difficult to express her discomfort. As a result, her academic performance was severely affected, showing the psychological effects and isolation she suffered for a long time. This experience contributed to shaping many of Sally Field's perspectives on life and career later on, and also showed her inner strength in overcoming past difficulties. As a result, Sally felt emotionally lonely. Her mother, Margaret, did not protect her daughter or provide her with nurturing during this critical time because she ignored the warning signs. She sought refuge from the stressful family environment by going out. When she felt lonely at home, she found solace in her extracurricular activities, especially theatre, which she devoted herself to. School performances provided some comfort to Sally, but her family situation only worsened as she entered adolescence. After Margaret's marriage to Jocko fell apart, she became an alcoholic and was unable to provide her daughter with the stable support system she needed. Growing up in a very unstable and difficult environment affected Sally Field's desire for a stable and secure life. She craved a stable and supportive life because she grew up in an unstable environment due to her stepfather's aggressive behavior and her parents' strained relationship. Her search for stability was further complicated by her mother's struggles and her father's absence. Her work and personal life were greatly affected by her need for emotional support and a return to normalcy. Just before her breakthrough role in the television comedy Gidget, Field's desire to be independent from authoritarianism led her to act rebelliously. Field met an unnamed man after finishing high school, and she became pregnant with his baby. The baby's termination in Tijuana was orchestrated by her stepfather, who was worried about the impact on the family. The family doctor drove her and her mom there. Field remembered waking up to the anesthesiologist touching her improperly during the surgery, which caused her much discomfort. In light of these setbacks, how did she eventually become a famous actress? And who does she say is her soulmate? Acting provided Sally Field an outlet from the persecution and misery she had endured for years. When she was a teenager, she began acting in school plays and found that taking on different characters helped her feel more in charge of her feelings and who she was. She embarked on a serious journey towards an acting profession after this key epiphany. Sally had a natural acting skill, even if she had a tough childhood. She had already achieved great success in her field by the time she was 18 years old. Margaret, Sally's mother, was skeptical at first, but she came around to supporting her daughter's growing acting enthusiasm. Margaret put Sally through acting school and got her several little parts in commercials. Others couldn't help but notice Sally due to her endearing personality and girl-next-door look. The starring part in the 1965 TV comedy Gidget was Sally's first big break. The comedy was entertaining and cheerful, 
following the exploits of Frances, a surfer girl who was both vivacious and obsessed with boys. Despite the show's cancellation after only one season, Sally's portrayal of the energetic teen struck a chord with viewers, as seen by the outstanding ratings for summer repeats. Capitalizing on this success, ABC Studios cast Sally in a major role in the 1967 television series The Flying Nun. Sally portrayed the role of Sister Bertrill, a nun with superpowers bestowed by her wide-brimmed hat in this offbeat comedy. The chance to host a primetime show and have a steady paycheck was appealing to Sally, even if she did not like the show's gimmicky idea. During its three-year run, 1967-1970, the Flying Nun established Sally as a beloved TV personality. Despite her popularity, Sally yearned to break out of her typecasting and demonstrate her serious acting chops. Her ambition to shed the stereotype of the innocent child actress drove her to seek out new experiences and push herself to her acting limits. Although Sally Field gained fame from her performances in Gidget and The Flying Nun, these parts frequently limited her to a certain sort of character one who is constantly happy, bright, and uncomplicated. Sally knew that if she wanted a successful acting career and to show off her skills, she had to take on more challenging parts. Because of this epiphany, she decided to choose her course for her career. Following the end of The Flying Nun, Sally planned to change how the public saw her. She first enrolled at the Actors Studio in 1971 to learn acting under the renowned Lee Strasberg. The goal of Strasberg's method of acting approaches was to help actors become more real performers by accessing their innermost feelings and experiences. This time of intense training changed Sally forever. Through acting, she was able to face and overcome traumatic things from her past. In the early 1970s, Sally started chasing more demanding parts in TV movies, armed with her newly refined abilities. She portrayed a disturbed young lady in the 1972 television film Home for the Holidays, which was one of her famous roles. Sally still had a hard time landing big movie parts, even though her skill was taking off. After becoming increasingly frustrated with her representatives' intransigence in securing her large film roles, she ultimately decided to terminate them. Sally finally got her big break in the 1967 western The Way West, co-starring Kirk Douglas. She was still unable to shake the typecasting that had followed her from her days on television despite the high accolades for her intense performance. Her breakout performance came in 1976, Sybil. Sally's performance in this movie was a significant change from her previous performances, as she played a young lady who suffered from dissociative identity disorder. Her performance was praised for its depth and emotional intensity, which resulted in her receiving a great deal of favorable attention. The performance was so successful that it earned her an Emmy Award in 1977. It also signaled a fundamental turn in her career, which allowed her to access chances in the film business that were more varied and considerable. What are some of the other roles that Sally Field has portrayed during her career, in addition to this one? Maintain your attention to discover out. Overcoming the phenomenon of typecasting and stepping into various positions. Overall, Sally Field's performance in The War Picture Heroes, which was released in 1977, was met with a variety of reactions but her acting stood out as particularly outstanding. Norma Ray, which was released in 1979, presented her with the opportunity to portray the lead character of a dedicated textile worker who was battling for workers' rights. This was her next great challenge. Even though Sally originally had some reservations about taking on this task, she decided to give it her whole commitment, and her perseverance paid off. Sally's portrayal of Norma Ray, which was both authentic and powerful, left a significant impression on the reviewers when the film was released. As a result of her performance, she was awarded the Academy Award for Best Actor, which further cemented her status as a serious dramatic actor. In the years that followed her triumph in Norma Ray, Sally continued to demonstrate the breadth of her acting abilities. It was in the year 1980 that she had an appearance in the comedy picture Smokey and the Bandit 2 and in the year 1981, she was the lead actress in the dramatic film Back Roads. She was nominated for the Golden Globe for her performances in the films Absence of Malice, 1981, and Kiss Me Goodbye, 1982, both of which received widespread recognition for their performances. Sally's ability to expertly combine comedic and dramatic elements, which exemplifies her diverse range of abilities, 
earned her praise and recognition. Sally's rising success may be attributed in part to her ability to connect with viewers via her portrayal of characters who possess the qualities of being an inspiration. Her career achieved a new level of success when she was awarded another Academy Award for her performance in the 1984 film Places in the Heart. During the Great Depression, she portrayed the role of a widow who was facing the challenge of maintaining the stability of her family and farm. Her portrayal of this character was so commanding and emotionally affecting that it garnered the attention of both the critics and the audience. Beginning in the middle of the 1980s, Sally Field's career was distinguished by a string of films that were not only critically praised, but also economically successful. It was clear that she was capable of handling a wide range of genres, from comedic roles, as seen in Smokey and the Bandit 2, to dramatic roles, as demonstrated in Absence of Malice. By demonstrating a wide range of acting styles during the 1980s and 1990s, Sally Field remained to continue to captivate viewers. The character of Marlin Eatonton, who was both powerful and vulnerable, was one that she portrayed in the film 1989 by Steel Magnolia. Alongside Robin Williams, Sally had yet another noteworthy performance in the 1993 film Mrs. Doubtfire, in which she deftly enacted a combination of comedic and dramatic elements. Her performance in this movie demonstrated her flexibility and further solidified her reputation for producing engaging work in a range of genres. Her performance brought her to the forefront of the industry. Over the years, Sally did not exhibit any indications of slowing down. It was because of her profound love for acting and her determination to take on parts that struck a chord with her on a personal level that she was able to maintain her relevance in a profession that is always changing. She proceeded to select roles that represented her personal experiences and tribulations, which resulted in her performances having an even greater significance and effect. Her journey via rigorous acting classes and tough parts became a route to self-discovery, which assisted her in overcoming the trauma she experienced as a youngster. She was able to find truth and sincerity in her work through acting, which gave her a sense of freedom and control over her own destiny. Acting also allowed her to look for such things. At this point, what was the nature of Sally's personal life and the sexual connections she had? Well, let's find out. Regarding Sally's private life, as Sally Field's reputation rose in the late 1970s, she fought with personal troubles that threatened to destroy everything she had accomplished that she had accomplished up until that point. Despite her success, Sally was profoundly impacted by the horrific experiences she experienced during her youth. As a result, she sought out partnerships to regain the trust and stability that she had failed to achieve in her life. Despite this, she tended to be drawn to intense relationships rather than real connections, which resulted in her partnerships frequently falling short of actual closeness. During the year 1968, Sally tied the knot with her high school beau, Stephen Craig, for the first time. Despite the chaos that Sally was experiencing in her life, their connection provided a sense of stability. Peter and Eli were the couple's two kids, and Sally found solace in the fact that their relationship had not changed much since they were teenagers. Sally, on the other hand, gradually found that this stability was constraining, and she yearned for excitement that went beyond the secure limits of her first love. The strains of Sally's troubles took its toll on her in 1975, which led to the separation of her and Craig, which was followed by the finalization of their divorce later that same year. During the time that Sally's career was thriving, her romantic life became a topic of discussion in the media. It was speculated that she was romantically involved with several well-known people, such as Davy Jones of the Monkees, Harrison Ford, who played her co-star in Heroes, and Burt Reynolds, who is the most well-known of them. 1977 was the year that Sally Reynolds and Burt Reynolds first began their strong and passionate love. The fact that they both came from problematic backgrounds contributed to the formation of a strong but unstable relationship between them. During the course of their five-year relationship, which was defined by high drama and persistent speculation about marriage, Sally made the decision to concentrate on her quickly developing profession rather than committing to a marriage with Reynolds. This connection, which was full of emotional highs and lows, was a reflection of matters from Sally's past that had not been handled. Sally went back to looking for stability after she had ended her relationship with Reynolds. She had her third son, Samuel, after she tied the knot with producer Alan Greisman in the year 1984. 
In spite of the fact that they had similar experiences as parents, Sally and Greisman's marriage terminated in the year 1994. After the couple divorced, Sally remained unmarried for the subsequent 10 years, devoting her time and energy to the upbringing of her children. So what were some of the other endeavors that Sally was involved in? Be sure to keep watching to learn more. Later career paths of Sally Sally Field never let herself rest on her laurels, despite the early success she had. She never stopped looking for new tasks to take on so that she could demonstrate her entire range as an actress. The commitment she had to perfecting her trade stayed unwavering throughout her whole career. In the 1990s, Sally further increased her flexibility, which she had already achieved in the 1970s and 1980s, when she had already received praise and many Academy Awards. A significant change occurred when she was cast in her first voice acting part in the family picture Homeward Bound, The Incredible Journey, which was released in 1993. She demonstrated her ability to bring charm and personality to animated characters by providing the voice for Sassy, a dog that is clever and sassy, character she portrayed in this film. At the same time that she was starring opposite Robin Williams and Pierce Brosnan in Mrs. Doubtfire, which was released in 1993, Sally continued to demonstrate her comic flair. She was only eight years older than Williams' role in real life, which highlights her ongoing attractiveness and adaptability. Sally portrayed the wife of Williams' character, but in real life, she was only eight years older than him. When Sally was cast in the part of Tom Hanks's mother in the film Forrest Gump in 1994, she achieved new heights of dramatic success. Sally's portrayal of Mrs. Gump conveyed a profound sense of emotional reality to the movie, even though she is just 10 years older than Tom Hanks. Although she had been in the public eye for several decades, Sally never stopped looking for parts that would allow her to explore other facets of her skill. With a regular guest appearance on the renowned medical drama ER, she made a major comeback to television in the year 2000. This performance won her a third Emmy Award, which she received for her work. It had been years since she had gotten a big part on television, but in 2006, she was cast as Nora Walker in the ensemble drama Brothers and Sisters. It was her riveting performance as the matriarch of the family that garnered her a second Emmy Award for Best Drama Actress. Her performance was a crucial contributor to the popularity of the show. As she approached her older years, Sally Field did not exhibit any physical or mental indications of slowing down. She was cast in the role of Aunt May in the superhero movie The Amazing Spider-Man, which was released in 2012 and broke box office records. Additionally, she was nominated for an Academy Award in the same year for her performance as Mary Todd Lincoln in the film Lincoln, which was directed by Steven Spielberg. Sally continued to acquire excellent parts despite the fact that she was in her 70s, demonstrating that her abilities were only becoming better with age. Throughout the course of her career, Sally never allowed herself to get complacent about her previous achievements. Rather than that, she made it a habit to look for roles that were challenging and gave her the opportunity to experiment with other areas of her acting ability. She was able to deftly transition between a variety of genres, including comedy, drama, television and cinema, while retaining her genuineness and allure throughout the entire process. In addition, she has had some challenging times. Let us find out about some of the difficulties she has had with her health and the times when she has been in danger of losing her life. Health problems that Sally is experiencing. At the Aspen Pitkin County Airport in Colorado on October 29, 1988, Sally Field and three members of her family were involved in a terrifying event. A private jet that belonged to television magnate Merv Griffin was in the process of taking off when it suddenly lost power and crashed into a parked aircraft. The individuals were on board the plane. A fortunate outcome of the tragedy was that all of the passengers on board escaped with very minor injuries. An additional obstacle was presented to Sally Field in the year 2005 when she was informed that she had osteoporosis. The Rally with Sally for Bone Health campaign was brought into being by Field to address this issue. This program, which was aimed at increasing awareness of osteoporosis and the significance of early detection, was developed by her in collaboration with the pharmaceutical firms Roche and GlaxoSmithKline. Additionally, the campaign encouraged the utilization of cutting-edge technology, such as bone density scans, to assist in early diagnosis. During the campaign, Field also brought attention to Bonova, 
which is a treatment for osteoporosis. It was her goal to encourage individuals to take responsibility for their bone health and to take an active role in the management of their health issues via the efforts that she made. Sally was a person who, despite her prominence, had a big heart. To answer your question, what are some of the charitable projects that Sally gave her time to? Maintain your attention to discover out. The advocacy of Sally. In addition to her work in front of and behind the camera, Field has been a strong champion for women in the entertainment business and has served as a mentor to younger performers to help them develop their acting skills. She has advocated for the advancement of women's chances and representation, drawing from her own experiences with sexism and typecasting in the entertainment business to provide support for the next generation of actors. The advocacy of Field extends beyond the realm of Hollywood. In addition to this, she is well known for her involvement in a variety of social concerns, such as the rights of women, health difficulties, and LGBTQ rights. Sally Field proves that her influence extends well beyond her acting profession by bringing attention to these significant topics via the use of her voice and platform. She can bring about positive change in a variety of facets of society. As she entered her latter years, Sally Field became a fervent supporter of issues that were important to her emotionally. She hoped that others who had been through experiences comparable to hers would find assistance through her efforts. Through the act of sharing her experience, particularly in the form of her book, Sally was able to heal and provide a voice to people who would otherwise feel as though they were not heard. The goal was not only to triumph over her difficulties, but also to have a constructive influence on society as a whole. As a result of Sally's willingness to be transparent about her weaknesses and challenges, she has become a symbol of resilient and compassionate individuality. And, what was her connection like with the other people she worked with? Well, let's find out. The bond that Sally Field developed with Jane Fonda and Jennifer Garner. A strong example of the power of female companionship in Hollywood is provided by the relationship between Sally Field and Jane Fonda which was emphasized by their collaboration on the film 80 for Brady. The unexpected visit that Fonda paid to Field in the 1980s was a significant factor in the beginning of their relationship. They have a strong connection because of their laid-back exchanges, humorous moments and game show situations. Field has been fortunate enough to have Fonda as a mentor throughout her career, which exemplifies the significance of supporting female connections in the entertainment business. It is widely acknowledged that the on-screen connection that Field shares with James Garner in Murphy's Romance is characterized by a natural and seamless nature. Garner is responsible for making Field feel cherished and understood. On the other hand, she had a less favorable experience with Tommy Lee Jones on the bridges of Madison County. She observed that Jones was not performing at his best during that time. As a well-known actress, let's take a look at some of the things she already has accomplished. Public acknowledgement and rewards are given. Throughout her career, Sally Field has received plenty of accolades and several honors. This is because her early life provided her with the power and depth that she needed. It was her performance in the film Norma Ray, in which she played a resolute factory worker who advocates for the rights of other workers, that brought her to the forefront of public attention. Her ability to portray sincerity and profound emotion, attributes that were formed by her own life experiences, earned her the Academy Award for Best Actress in 1979. This performance served as evidence of her capacity to convey these qualities. For her performance in the film Places in the Heart, Sally Field was awarded the Academy Award for Best Actress for the second time in 1984. Under her victory, her status as one of the most gifted and well-respected actresses in Hollywood was firmly established. She famously said, You like me, you really like me during her acceptance speech, a comment that has since become a quote that has become synonymous with her, as well as Sally's legacy and effect. Although she has been working in the entertainment industry for a considerable amount of time, Sally Field continues to be a prominent and important person in Hollywood. Over the course of her career, she has constantly taken on a diverse range of parts in both cinema and television, and she has brought a singular combination of passion and honesty to each and every performance. Her most recent work in television series such as ER and films such as Lincoln, for instance, exemplifies her ongoing flexibility and her capacity to captivate viewers. The influence of Sally Field extends well beyond the realm of acting. 
In addition to that, she has been a key contributor in the roles of director and producer. Beautiful was the picture that she directed in the year 2000, and she has also been involved in producing a number of other films. Sally is now divulging long-held secrets to the public. To what does it pertain? Keep an eye out for the unveiling of these particulars. Pieces is a memoir written by Sally Field. A candid and personal insight into Sally Field's path of self-discovery is provided in the film In Pieces, which discloses profound and sometimes heartbreaking realities about her private life. The book delves into her troubled life, focusing specifically on the traumatic circumstances she encountered while living in Hollywood during the 1950s. Sally describes how she was summoned to her stepfather's bedroom by herself for participating in unsuitable special activities. This experience left her feeling bewildered and unable to express her thoughts. The analysis that Sally makes of the difficult connection that she has with her mother, Margaret, is one of the most important sections of the novel. Margaret's failure to protect Sally from these painful occurrences instilled a developing sense of animosity in Sally, despite the fact that Sally and her mother shared a strong relationship. Because she was not protected, Sally suffered long-lasting emotional traumas that continued to have an impact on her throughout her life. Not until Margaret's latter years did Sally finally face her mother and ask for the answers she had yearned for but feared. Margaret's mother had been a source of anxiety for Sally. The experiences that Sally had as a mother to her own children are also discussed in this book. Her early troubles with her own mother influenced her perspective on parenting, and she discusses how she overcame those obstacles to become a better parent. She also discusses how she helped her own mother overcome such challenges. In addition, Sally Field discusses frightening personal events that were in direct opposition to her public persona, public image. She discusses being pressured into an unwelcome personal relationship with director Bob Rafelson and shares the terrible experience of obtaining an unlawful termination of her pregnancy in Mexico while working on The Flying Nun. These discoveries shed light on the personal sacrifices and challenges she endured behind the scenes which stands in stark contrast to the picture of a virtuous person that she presented on television. Regarding the person who has been the love of her life, what admissions does she need to make? Well, let's find out. There have been revelations regarding Burt Reynolds. At long last, Sally Field admits that he was the one and only love of her life. The autobiography written by Sally Field, titled In Pieces, is a profoundly personal and illuminating glimpse into her life particularly the turbulent relationship she had with Burt Reynolds. Their love affair, which started in the late 1970s and continued into the early 1980s, was intense, but it was also laden with emotional challenges. Field's book provides a comprehensive account of the intricate dynamics of their relationship with a particular emphasis on the emotional abuse and controlling conduct that she endured at the hands of Reynolds. Burt Reynolds and Sally Field were working on the set of Smokey and the Bandit when they first met, and their connection to one another was instantaneous. On the other hand, as their relationship progressed, Reynolds' anxieties and tendency to exert control grew more obvious. It was not uncommon for him to be envious of Field's burgeoning career, and he encouraged her to avoid taking on more significant dramatic parts. For example, when Field was given the main role in Norma Ray, a role that ultimately earned her an Academy Award. Reynolds declined the offer, which undermined Field's faith in her ability. The envy and domineering conduct that Reynolds displayed extended beyond the realm of professional concerns. He regularly made disparaging remarks about Field, comparing her unfavorably to other actresses whom he considered to be more brilliant or attractive. Field's self-esteem suffered as a result of these persistent comments and she ended up feeling as though she did not deserve her own achievement. A poisonous atmosphere was created for her as a result of the emotional abuse, and she found herself caught in a loop of seeking Reynolds's acceptance, experiencing both highs and lows in her emotions. At the same time, Field's personal life was negatively impacted by Reynolds's possessiveness. While he exerted a great deal of pressure on her to put him ahead of everything else, he showed little interest in her children. He would accuse her of adultery without any particular justification, so creating an environment that was characterized by distrust and paranoia. He would also control the terms of her work and friendship interactions. Field's ability to break out from the destructive relationship 
was made even more difficult by the fact that she was cut off from her support network as a result of this controlling conduct. Fields' career continues to flourish, despite the difficulties mentioned earlier. The performance that she gave in Norma Ray was a big accomplishment for her, as it earned her an Academy Award and demonstrated both her brilliance and her flexibility. Although this win was bittersweet, since it brought to light the disparity between her professional achievement and her troubles, it also marked the beginning of her understanding of her value outside of Reynolds's shadow. So what do you think about her revelations regarding Reynolds? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below. We would love to hear from you. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more interesting updates. Thank you and see you in the next videos.